to study number six in Job and our Search the Scriptures study. I can't think of a better book in the Bible to be in right now as I am for about, well, five days now, six days experiencing extreme back pain and I just feel miserable and don't want to do anything, but I'm not nearly in as bad a shape as Job. This is a rich book, and I uh, hope it's a blessing to you. Today we are in, in chapter 11 and 12 in our sixth day of studying Job, uh, which corresponds to the six days I've been in pain. Uh, and we are going to today look at three different questions, trying to respond to three different sets of questions. The first is this, why do you think Zophar failed to help Job? Secondly, Eliphaz, the first friend of his, spoke of visions and research. Bildad, the second friend, uh, spoke of wisdom and of the ancients. To what authority does Zophar appeal to support his conviction that sin and suffering are inevitably linked? And finally, Zophar and Job each speak of divine wisdom. Compare the various examples of it which they cite. Well, let's look at chapter number 11 and 12 of the book of Job today. If you have a Bible, take it out and uh, turn to Job chapter number 11. If not, the words will be on the screen. And let's listen to this portion of scripture together. Job 11. Then Zophar the Naamathite replied, Are all these words to go unanswered? Is this talker to be vindicated? Will your idle talk reduce men to silence? Will no one rebuke you when you mock? You say to God, my beliefs are flawless and I am pure in your sight. Oh, how I wish that God would speak, that he would open his lips against you and disclose to you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom has two sides. Know this, God has even forgotten some of your sin. Can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than the heavens. What can you do? They are deeper than the depths of the grave. What can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth and wider than the sea. If he comes along and confines you in prison and convenes a court, who can oppose him? Surely he recognizes deceitful men. And when he sees evil, does he not take note? But a witless man can no more become wise that a wild donkey's coat can be born a man. Yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then you will lift up your face without shame. You will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by. Life will be brighter than noonday and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. You will lie down with no one to make you afraid, and many will court your favor. But the eyes of the wicked will fail, and escape will elude them. Their hope will become a dying gasp. Job 12. Then Job replied, Doubtless you are the people, and wisdom will die with you. But I have a mind as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know all these things? I have become a laughingstock to my friends, though I called upon God and he answered, a mere laughingstock, though righteous and blameless. Men at ease have contempt for misfortune as the fate of those whose feet are slipping. The tents of marauders are undisturbed. And those who provoke God are secure, those who carry their God in their hands. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds of the air, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. Does not the ear test words as the tongue tastes food. Is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not long life bring understanding? To God belong wisdom and power, counsel and understanding are his. 
What he tears down cannot be rebuilt. The man he imprisons cannot be released. If he holds back the waters, there is drought. If he lets them loose, they devastate the land. To him belong strength and victory. Both deceit and deceiver are his. He leads counselors away, stripped and makes fools of judges. He takes off the shackles put on by kings and ties a loincloth around their waist. He leads priests away, stripped and overthrows men long established. He silences the lips of trusted advisors and takes away the discernment of elders. He pours contempt on nobles and disarms the mighty. He reveals the deep things of darkness and brings deep shadows into the light. He makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nations and disperses them. He deprives the leaders of the earth of their reason. He sends them wandering through a trackless waste. They grope in darkness with no light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. Now let's uh, look to the questions. Why do you think that Zophar failed to help Job? Well, the bottom line is, when you're sick, when you're in pain, when you're miserable, everybody thinks they have the right answer for you. It's easy to have the right answer when you're not the one going through it. I'm currently going through something that's a prime example of that. I've got a lot of pain in my lower back from lifting something this week. And everybody has the right remedy. But nearly none of those remedies are the same. One person says, whatever you do, don't put ice on it. And immediately after that, you have someone with these words come out of their mouth. They say, ice, ice, ice. Whatever you do, put ice on it. Never, ever put heat on it. So what's the right answer? Well, you may think you know it, but I Googled it, and I Googled lower back pain, ice or heat, just a few moments ago. And the answer is, it depends on what article you click on. Even the experts don't agree anymore on this issue than the people in the foyer after church. The best answer that I found was this, whatever feels right to you. Uh, and in this study of Job, uh, I think that's the same conclusion that I have to come to when it comes to giving advice to uh, other people when they're going through times of suffering. Let's face it, Job's friends had some very good and some very biblical things to say. But sometimes certain biblical principles don't apply in certain situations, but other biblical principles do. The reality is that sometimes people are in a mess because there's a lot of sin in their life. And other times people are in a mess because, let's face it, there's a lot of sin in the world. And we live in the world, and this world we live in affects us from time to time. And then there are those moments when God marches us through a desert to test us and to make us stronger. So what we do when what do we do when somebody's in pain? How do we comfort them? I tend to tell people this that uh, I have no idea what you're going through, but I'll pray for you. And let's pray that God would give you wisdom and the strength to get through this battle. And perhaps he'll remove this from you and perhaps not. But one thing that I'm certain of is that he can bring you through it. Second question, Eliphaz spoke of visions and research, and Bildad spoke of wisdom and of the ancients. To what authority does Zophar appeal in chapter 11 and to support his conviction that sin and suffering are inevitably linked? Well, Zophar seems to be trying to appeal to a human form of justice, that God knows what he's doing and God knows exactly what's going on with us and we must... Uh, we may be able to deceive other people, but God can see right through everything that we do, and he doesn't allow our deceit to go unpunished. That's his reasoning. And Job, of course, counters that argument by appealing to the blessings that are received by those that are obviously wicked and make no attempt whatsoever to cover it up. So we've got this dilemma in the book of Job. Final question, Zophar and Job each speak of divine wisdom. Compare their various examples of it that they cite <coughs> excuse me Job and Zophar uh, make many of the exact same kind of arguments and all their arguments are good arguments that's why it's so frustrating uh, to read and study the book of Job you find yourself saying at one point oh Zophar has a point there and then you turn right around and say well Job has a point there on the other hand so in one sense they're both right God does know what he's doing 
I guess what we can take from this study of the book of Job is that while God does know what he's doing, we don't have a clue. I don't know if this has helped you or not. I don't know what you're going through today, but hang in there. I have no idea what, what it's like to go through what you're going through, but God knows exactly what you're going through. He knows the why of it, and it will be okay. Hope you're having a fantastic day. God bless the rest of your day. Thank you.